Hello everyone, welcome to our physics lesson Particulate Nature of Matter Form 1. We are going to study Particulate Nature of Matter. This is topic 5 Form 1, but it is good for even Form 2, 3, 4 as a revision. So, as the heading suggests, the topic is about matter and what makes up matter and in it it has already an answer particles so particulate nature of matter that matter is made up of particles so already the heading is provoking your thinking but it has an answer that requires proof. If you say particles make up matter, then you have to prove if that is true. My introduction requires you to know what is matter. So matter is anything that occupies space and has weight. Okay? Now, I've used and has mass. Okay? Mass is what makes up matter. Okay? But if you put weight, you are still okay. So, we have to know that matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. It is what makes it. Okay? After understanding what is matter, we have to know that matter exists in three forms. Okay? Solid, liquid, and gas. In a nutshell, matter can be in solid form, in liquid form, and in gaseous form. Right? Then what makes up that matter, be it in solid, liquid, or gaseous form, what makes it? Matter is made up of small particles. So you take, for example, I take, this is matter, in which state? Solid. If I take a piece, this piece, see, subdivide it, again subdivide it, again subdivide it, it is becoming smaller, it's becoming smaller. You do it severally. Again, it becomes smaller. Eh? Again, I subdivide it. It is becoming smaller and you have to use a lot of force. Then I get another small piece. Again. So subdivision of paper. Okay. You are trying to make it small, small, smaller, smaller, smaller until it becomes a bit difficult with your bare hands to subdivide. It becomes a bit difficult to subdivide now. You see? And this was subdivided. You got this. Then you subdivide. Now you have a small piece. Very small. Keep on subdividing. It tells us the subdivision can go on and on and on until you use a machine. On and on, you will still remain with a particle. So, subdivision of paper is a proof that matter is made up of particles. We can also use the method of dilution. Dilution, okay? Use the method of dilution. 
and a good example you can use at home is permanganate okay that stuff which is bluish in color so what do you do you fill you fill maybe we can have some water up to this level water not fill just some water and then we put the blue stuff the blue stuff i wish i had a blue i don't have blue but that is pomegranate that is pomegranate okay and then it will spread now the pomegranate will spread in that water okay and then you will have a very strong color purple color strong okay so now we want to carry the process of dilution on this so first we make a solution okay we make a solution eh? get some water in a beaker then you put what pomegranate then you will get a purple solution purple solution eh? now after getting the solution we do the process of weakening that solution eh? weakening add some water here that deep purple color becomes less deep purple in color in other words the purpleness that being purple is reducing in its intensity it was very deep mm, deep you add some water now it is not very deep purple just deep then you add water, just deep. Then you add more water. The purple is dying out. So that process of dilution kills the strength of purple color. Okay? It kills. It reduces the strength of purple color. So that, what does it mean? That this purple, this permanganate, this is permanganate. So you add some water, you add some water, it eats out, it eats out, it eats out, keep on eating out. So this thing is no longer there is no longer strong purple you keep on adding it disappears until now that purple in purple color is over is is finished that is dilution we are trying to add water we see that small particle keep on chopping off from the original big one so the purple, the intensity of purple dies. That is dilution. Then we can have the third proof. Adding solid in a solvent. Adding solid in a solvent. Adding solid in a solvent. So let us have this. And then we have we have the cock here so we place before we put the cock we place some salt so can i put uh, salt here salt 
Then, mm -hmm. you put the salt. Put the salt first. So put the salt in a, a flask there. Okay? So we go number two. Uh, we add some water. So we have salt here. We add some water. Mm -hmm. Put the cork. until it is full. So fill with water. Fill with water. Fill with water. We fill this flask which had salt. Now we fill it with the water carefully. Carefully. Even this salt, you put it carefully at the bottom. You use a pipette. You suck in water and then you release so that it comes slowly in the flask until it is full. So it is full. It is full. Then the third thing, what do we do? We shake. So we shake with the cork. So we take this stuff in step two. We shake it. Shake. Shake. You shake it. You shake it. Okay. You shake it. And then place it on the table. Okay. What do you find? We, we don't see salt separate from water. We see everything as a solution. But look here. There is empty space. This is shake. So we see some empty space. Empty space here. Now we have to account for this. We have to account for this, okay? We have salt and we have water. We have already said that matter is made up of particles. So I want us to understand even water is not continuous. Eh? It's not something continuous. Even water in its state is made up of small particles. Salt is made up of small particles. Now the two are being put in one container and shaken. Shaken. In one container and then shaken. Here we have two matters, states of matter. We have the solid, we have the liquid. And then we do what? We shake. What happens? There is a space. So something must have happened. One, we are learning that the nature of the particle of salt is different from the nature of the particle of the liquid. Number one. They are not the same. Okay? They are not the same. What does it mean? They have different structures. Salt has different structure. Water has different structure. That's why we have this gap. Okay? So solid is not in continuous form. Liquid is not in continuous form. Even gas is not in continuous form. They exist in the form of particles. 
Okay. So what happened here? Okay. The particles of salt must have gone in the particles of water. Particles of salt must have gone in particle or, or in a, in a spaces in the particles of water. We focus a bit. I have some space to write here. Here, just limited space. Then here, it's limited, but I can write. So, for example, exaggeration. I'm exaggerating. This is particle of water. And then this is particle of salt. An example. Just to give you an idea. So the nature of particle of water is different from particle of salt. Okay. So one must have been accommodated in the other so that its volume basically reduced. And since it is a small volume that reduced, it must have been this salt that has vanished. Has vanished by being accommodated here. So we are seeing the particles of salt. And this is the particle of water. Just for understanding, the particles of salt were accommodated in some spaces in the particles of water. So it's like the volume of salt vanished. We are remaining with the volume of water. Water particles accommodated salt particles. Those are three proofs you get in your book. Okay? So it's upon you to choose first what is simpler. After comprehending that, go to the other and the other. There are only three. The first one is the simplest because really when you tear, you will keep on doing it, but you will not finish it. You have maize when you take to the posho mill to nashaga Hmm? And then you remain with the unga. Unga. Big particle, maize, cereals. Then you have very fine. Then you have solid in a solvent. Okay? Solid in a solvent. So, solid salt in water. Water particles have small spaces in them that would accommodate the particles of salt and therefore the volume reduced. That is what proves that matter is made up of particles. Go through. We shall have lesson two. We move from there and we see what happens in when we go to uh, you have like you can do it at home some flour grains and then you sprinkle them on water what happens it tells us what is happening in water okay or you can have smoke you you you, you get something smoldering you will see the smoke moving up those are evidence of matter is made up of small particles. Subscribe so that you get lesson two from one particulate nature of matter. Until then, bye bye.